Put your glasses up, put your glasses up, a toast to me. Welcome to a Toast to the Men Network with your guy, SD. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for taking out some time in your day to break bread with me. Now, before we get started, you know the routine. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. If you are not subscribed, hit the notification button so you are notified about this content dropping. Yes, hit the like button. It's free, y'all. It's free. It helps the algorithm. Now, I want to talk about a story in a video that went viral. I don't know about the brother Kevin Ford. Now, this brother has been an employee of 27 years uh, with uh, Burger King, the fast food giant. And a co worker recorded his manager gifting him a few little gifts, uh, honoring him for 27 years of service with Burger King. He recorded that and, and uh, it went viral on IG and TikTok. And from there, you know, I guess the daughter got wind of it and uh, she created a GoFundMe campaign and she was only asking for $200. She was only asking for $200 so he can get a plane ticket to come see her and her grandkids and his grandkids. Man, that GoFundMe ended up raising over $200,000. $200,000, man. So this brother is all over the world right now his face his story is all over the world australia uk uh today's show people magazine he, he's all over the place and man there's a few layers to this story i like to dive into man there's a there's a few things we can we can look at a few perspectives we can look at this from and i know some people are far left and far right you know i got seen people who are very emotional about this story and some people who are criticizing him uh, about the story and so i can see it both ways i like to try to be objective you know this is what i do so let's dive into it now the brother is 54 years old been with uh burger king for 27 years 27 years now that shows dedication uh and, and he's never been late never missed a shift never been absent never missed a shift and and so that is to be honored, man. That, that's something to say about that. Uh, within context, within boundaries, right? Within boundaries. You know, I compare it to or equate it to someone with perfect attendance in school. But they just don't do well academically. You know, they don't do well even after school in life. But they had perfect attendance. They hang their hat on that, that they're there all the time. They're timely. Uh, they can be counted on to be there. And I know people who have bad behavior, uh, who did horrible in school, but had perfect attendance. And they would walk across that stage and get that perfect attendance award. You know, I, I never really cared about that. To be honest, I never cared too much at a certain age about the honor roll. At, at some point I did, you know, I was very competitive. But at some point, I only cared about the test. And I know that sounds weird, uh, but at some point, I, I think eighth grade, I just, uh, I, I didn't care about the classwork like that. Never cared about the attendance, you know. Um, I did want to be on time, but I didn't care if I had perfect attendance. But I did care about the test for some reason. I saw that as competitive. I saw that as the true measure of what you knew. And so I cared about that. Uh, but you know, within context, within boundaries, he should be, you know, honored for that. And it's still a feat to not miss a shift in 27 years. That, that is a feat. Um, I couldn't pull that off. I, I don't desire to pull that off, but to each his own. Now, when I look at this man, I, I say, man, this brother's been at this job for 27 years, never missed a shift. But his daughter is campaigning for $200 so he can get a plane ticket to see her and his grandkids. Now, on the surface, I can see how people get emotional and be like, ah, oh, that's so sweet. This man couldn't even afford to go see his daughter. Man, I just don't buy that fully. I don't buy that fully. Um, you know, remove the emotion. Just think logically. 
you telling me you couldn't afford a two hundred dollar ticket, man? You could you can do a side job for that if it's a priority of yours. If it's really a priority of yours, you can do a side gig if you if you're struggling that badly. If it's really a priority of yours, you can borrow that to go see your grandkids. If it's really a priority, so I'm not totally buying that. Either you know this brother has some other habits. And yeah, you can be a working guy on time and have habits. I, I know people like that. Uh, that are on time, work, you know, uh, from with dedication, you know, but but have habits, have some demons uh, that they have to tackle and, and have failed to tackle. I know people like that, so that doesn't that doesn't move me. But so I'm just not buying it uh, that you couldn't afford a two hundred dollar plane ticket you know now if it's a priority you'll make it happen you'll, you'll make it happen uh either you're bad with your money you got some kind of habit or it's just not a priority of yours and that's just the fact of it people when you remove the emotion that's a fact of it we make happen what we want to make happen period that's why i don't believe in giving people discounts unless uh it favors the business i don't care about the sad story people get or make a way for what they want to make a way for I and mean, they'll ask you for a discount but then you look at their shoes and you look at their clothes or you look at their IG page man they're balling out but they'll ask you for a discount for your product or your service man Negro please I ain't buying it I ain't buying it so I don't agree with the people that's far left or far right I think as uh, so beloved as below as below so below uh, as as above you know no one is as good as you think they are and no one is as bad as you think they are that goes for this brother that goes for me that goes for you and so we really got to remove the emotions sometimes man and just look at things look at stories look at people from an objective compassionate view passionate but don't get so wrapped up in crit critiquing criticizing don't get so wrapped up in uh, honoring right and, and uh, doting over because that leaves you in an unbalanced place where you can't be objective where your vision is blurred and so we can learn so much from the story you know what I'm saying we can learn so much uh, I saw the brother speak he was humble. He was he was uh, he was emotional. He was appreciative, and it was a beautiful thing to see. It was a beautiful thing to see. And so I think about. It, I say, man, through all these years, right? You know, you had youngsters or just people, period, that he worked with. Talk behind his back. They probably said things, you know to his face in a subtle way or, or maybe straight up a direct way about how he hasn't climbed the ladder he's been at Burger King for 27 years man this probably started back when he was there 10 years people saying stuff 15 years 20 years people saying their little comments about how he's in the same position after all these years you know people have talked you know customers Who've lived in the neighborhood who have been coming to that Burger King for years have, have have said certain things or mumbled certain things or thought certain things you know so I can't imagine what that brother has endured you know when, when it comes to that you know but he stayed the course and uh, you know it turns out that when he was a young man he got full custody of his two daughters and so he had to raise them as a single father that needs to be honored that needs to be honored uh, you know so maybe somewhere along the line man his confidence was stunning maybe he didn't have the self-confidence to drive to to uh, persevere and to think higher you know maybe he got bog boggled down with raising these kids raising two girls you know that's a that's that's a hurdle within itself that's a challenge within itself you know uh, the, the, one of the daughters said he did remarry so maybe you know caused some some ease there too but I didn't see a wife on set so maybe endured another divorce you know so 
you never know, man. You never know, you know. But uh, I hope this brother takes full advantage of this opportunity. Full advantage. Because let me tell you how life works. This brother has had other opportunities. Other opportunities to fulfill his purpose, to be on his mission, to be about his business. He was not created to work at Burger King for 27 years. You can't get me, you can't make me believe that. But there's something about this brother's personality. There's something about his energy that has him in this position. And everything just came together for the perfect time. And look at him. He's on front stage in front of the world, across the world. So he has to witness that. And he has to really take uh, take advantage of this opportunity and see what's going on. And see that he has everything in him to get what he wants and needs. You know, so if you hear his story, if you hear him talk, look at the video, you can see that he's been struggling. You know, he's been struggling. So it's not like he's in that position and he's happy. Right. And he's content. No, he's been struggling. You know, so there are people that are in his position who are not struggling, though. Believe that. Believe that. Don't. Don't just assume because someone's working at been working at twenty at Burger King for twenty seven years, or they work at Burger King period, that they're struggling. No, there are some people out here that know how to manipulate money. They know how to invest and save money. I'm telling you, and that, that you would not expect. So yeah, and there are people who work in corporate America or who are entrepreneurs or business people who are bad with money. Maybe they have access to a lot of it, but they're bad at it. They're horrible at it. So don't assume because someone has a lot of money that they're good with money. Or because they have a, a low paying job that they're bad with money. Or that they don't have money. That is just not the case, man. I know people who make close to minimum wage. I wouldn't say that close to minimum wage, man. They, they're low income. And they have no, they get no government assistance and they travel. They travel a lot. I know people like that and they enjoy life. They live life to the fullest. Hey man, it's not about what you make, it's what you do with it. You know, one time I dated this girl and man, she was, you know, after a while we, we, we got to know each other and uh, she always needed help. I always needed help. You know, I would help her out a little bit. But then it was getting, and then I got into her business. Asked, her, man, what are you doing with your money? Because if you keep asking me for money, I, I got a right to ask you, what are you doing with it? Uh, and so, you know, she, she made these excuses. And um, she said, I quote, I need to make more money. She was saying she needed to make more money. And I said, no. It's not how much money you make. You don't need to make more money. You'll still be broke if you made more money. And she was offended. But that's just the truth of it. Because you're a bad steward of the money you have. You're not disciplined. You're living above your means. So if you make more money, you're just going to do more of what you're already doing. And you're still going to be broke. That's just the fact of it, people. So uh, I say all that to say, you know... This guy should be honored. There's something about his energy. There's something about what's in him that has him on this stage. But don't get it twisted. There's also some things that he needs to tackle. I don't know. He knows. And man, that goes for all of us. That goes for me. That goes for you. So this is why we shouldn't judge. This is why we shouldn't judge. We should have compassion. But we should have discernment. And we should be able to look at each other's life, at our own life first, but then others' life and say, let me learn from that. Let me not crucify that brother or that sister, but let me learn from that. Let me learn from that so I can avoid that or I can help that brother or sister or inspire, encourage that brother or sister, man. So this is why it's best to be objective. Don't get too emotional either way. Just look at it and say, man, what can I learn? Is this a teaching moment? And uh, this is what this is, man. Uh, but yeah, there, there's something else going on. If this brother can't get a $200 ticket to see his, his daughter and grandkids, there's something going on. 
Trust me. Trust me. So I just want that brother to take full advantage of this opportunity. Uh, knock out whatever he, whatever he needs to knock out. And understand, man, you bigger. You're bigger than what you're, 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 what you're doing. You have a bigger calling. And uh, that's just what it is, y'all. So, yeah, salute this brother. Salute yourselves. You know what I'm saying? You're not as bad as they say you are. And you ain't as good as they say you are. As below, as above, so below. As always, love. Peace.